Shalom, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Today we have a very special guest with us here, Congressman Tom Garrett. Uh, actually, we could even say Captain Garrett. He's former uh, military, uh, was in the Army. He serves the 5th District uh, of Virginia. And recently, just a video was released uh, on, his, on a press release there about his trip to Syria and Iraq. And um, some very provocative things that he said before Congress. And we wanted to share some of those thoughts there with you and uh, bring that to our listeners all over the world here today. Congressman uh, Garrett, thank you for coming on Israeli News Live. We certainly appreciate your time. That's my pleasure. Thank you, Brad. Uh, Congressman Garrett, you know, I was looking a little bit on your background and, of course, even in the interview that you are the, the address before Congress. And one of the things that really struck out to me is your time in Yugoslavia, where you spent about a year uh, there. And of course, you have witnessed firsthand what genocide is like. Can you comment a little bit about that? Well, it was, you know, obviously 10,000 innocent people were slaughtered in, in, in Srebrenica and, and pushed into mass graves. But you know, this happens all the time, and, you know, it was Edmund Burke who said all that's necessary for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. We watched during that same time frame 10,000 human lives a day snuffed out in Rwanda for 100 days, a million people. The Christian population in Iraq and Syria at its zenith in the 21st century was somewhere around 3 million. Right now it's about 400,000. We've recognized this as ethnic cleansing and genocide. Um, obviously, the Jewish uh, people have experienced this sort of horrific uh, victimization repeatedly throughout history and uh, while I'm a Christian I believe that every person uh, of faith who seeks not to harm their neighbors and live only in peace and harmony with some freedom and self-determination deserves a voice and so that's kind of why we went to Syria that experience in Yugoslavia was formative uh, and I'm glad I went uh, but the bad news is that when I see the US taking a turn for the worse as it relates to our policy over there it hurts more to know that people will die when you've had dinner with them, when you've when you've laughed with them, when you've seen their families. And uh, this is just uh, I can't I can't really wrap my brain around. I think the short sightedness of this policy decision. You know, the thing is, too, uh, Congressman, is it doesn't look like it's going to get any better anytime soon. And I mean, we've already had eight years of uh, as it is deemed in most media, a civil war. Uh, but quite frankly, it doesn't really look like a civil war. We have so many different nations, including Turkey, that have uh, sponsored all types of jihadists in the country. Al Nusra, Al Qaeda, some of the most popular names that we hear about. And uh, that's another thing that uh, you witnessed in your trip, uh, going, of course, to Iraq and then uh, into Syria, uh, the, the, the ethnic cleansing of the Christian communities uh, that you have seen. I watched the, uh, the, the address, and I'd like for you to comment about that, what you've seen from your experience, because experiencing it firsthand in Yugoslavia, certainly gives you the ability to recognize uh, what you see on the ground as you make that trip. So things that are happening that just if, if people knew in the West, I think should absolutely blow their minds. Iran is quite literally facilitating the transfer of homes and land from Yazidis and Christians to the Shia Shabak, right? I don't blame the Shia Shabak. I blame Iran. Um, some Christians are essentially complicit, cooperating uh, with this, this ethnic cleansing uh, to enrich themselves, which is disgusting to me. Um, there are Iranian forces on the ground in Turkey, I'm sorry, in Syria, in, in Iraq. This is absolutely true. Uh, the popular mobilization units in Iraq, the Hashd al uh, some are good people who want to defend their neighborhoods. So, some are co-opted again by Iran in this radical strain of Shia. Uh, and in, in Syria, uh, we were on the uh, west side of Jerablus at the front lines of, at a building that they shot at the day we were there. Uh, and there was a position held by the Free Syrian Army, which is really occupied by folks like Al Nusra uh, and Al Sham, depending upon where you are. Uh, and th they had a Turkish military facility within a couple of miles uh, with tanks and helicopters, etc. You can't tell me, having served in the military, that if the Turks didn't sanction their violence against not terrorists, but people seeking freedom and self-determination uh, in that part of the country, they would have been able to do that. So Turkey essentially is supporting and sanctioning these terrorists, the Free Syrian Army, uh, as we speak. And, and, and where Turkey's gone in, 
uh, and I didn't go into places like Africa because I wouldn't have come back. But we have photos of, of, of the police, which Westerners think of as one thing, but it's really a paramilitary organization, essentially shouting Heil Erdogan, right? I mean, on video, this is frightfully reminiscent of horrific past memories. Uh, they fly the Turkish flag over the town halls. They fly the Turkish flag over the schools, over the hospitals. The hospital in Afrin had on its side, prior to the Turkish occupation, uh, indications that it was a hospital in Arabic and Kurdish. They're now in Turkish and Arabic. Um, and this is a story that needs to be told, right? Israel gave back the Sinai. Uh, Turkey has no intentions when they're changing the school curriculum to Turkish, I think, of relinquishing Abab, of, of Jerablus, of Afrin. And, and Erdogan has said as recently as yesterday that they will go into Mimic at, at any moment, his words, uh, and cleanse, right? Words matter. The area yes. of the Kurds, and and you know the thing about the Syrian Democratic Council is yes, the Kurds have taken a leadership role in many instances. It's not a Kurdish experiment; it's a human experiment. There are Arabs, there are Christians, there are Yazidis, Circassians, there there are Kurds certainly, uh, but this is a Turkish lie that somehow this is Turkey versus Kurds. This is Turkey versus humans. You know, you you bring up. Uh, uh uh, Afrin and what happened there and you know it's really a tragedy especially for the Kurds that the, the things that have been taking place you know at one time the US had stood with them then the Russians began to stand with them but when Turkey when Erdogan had given the order to go in to take Afrin the Russians just pull out and just totally abandon them and uh, and it seems to happen over and over and over again the best fighting force on the ground and this has been spoken by President Putin it's been spoken by President uh, Trump and others have always been the Kurds and yet every time when it comes to Turkey we keep seeing that both the United States and Russia as well always seem to cave in to the demands of Erdogan and can you comment on that? That's just disturbing. Well, the same day that we announced we were going to withdraw our support for the freedom-seeking people in northeastern Syria, we announced that we were engaging in a $3.5 billion arms deal with Erdogan to sell Patriot missiles on top of the F-35s that we sold them. Now, to put this in context, last week, um, Turkish aircraft bombed Sinjar in the sovereign nation of Iraq. Now, if Sinjar sounds familiar, that's the place where thousands upon thousands of Christians and Yazidis were massacred. I met one young woman who was sold as a sex slave essentially 26 times by her best count, traded for cigarettes or a handgun. And so the Turks are bombing a sovereign nation in Iraq. We don't even bat an eyelash. And the Kurds have been the only... Now, look, let's put history in context. In 1915, Kurds helped massacre Christians at the behest of the Ottoman Turks. But the only people who circled around on the end of a plane to defend Christians and stand shoulder to shoulder with Christian minorities in northeast Syria this time around were the Kurds. So here's a minority among the minority, right, because while they might be the majority in some regions, they're a majority in the area, who understands that tolerance and pluralism is the route to sustainable, hopeful future. And, you know, how many times have we betrayed uh, Kurds in one country or another, Iran, Iraq, uh, Syria, Turkey, in the last in my lifetime, I can count six major instances, and I believe that as a human being, you know, we're we're similar to a, a geopolitical actor. Our word determines when, whether we keep it determines who will deal with us how. Uh, so we lose this face. Let me give you an anecdotal story. I know people who've gone through the Special Forces Q course, and what Special Forces the United States Army do is primarily sort of help uh, to get local national support in the United States in our endeavors. Half that course is trying to convince people that we're not going to abandon them. It's learning how to convince people that we won't treat them like we treated the Hmong, like we treated people in, in Laos at the end of uh, Vietnam, like we, like, like we treated the Kurds again and again. There's a reason for that, and that costs American lives on the battlefield, but it will cost American lives at home. It will cost lives in Europe. It will definitively cost lives in Israel uh, if the Iranians are allowed to complete their land bridge to, to Lebanon to support their Hezbollah subcomponent that's already murdering people. So, you know, we got to start worrying about the small things, how we deal with people who treat their citizens poorly, and the big things will take care of themselves. You know, and, and I agree with you on this, Congressman, the, the you know, the, the Yazidi, 
Yazdis. One thing about them that, uh, that a lot of people don't even realize is these are the people that are supposed to be the descendants of the wise men to begin with. And so for Jews and Christians alike, uh, it, this matters and uh, should matter to anyone. But, you know, we're seeing three groups specifically that are being genocide in Syria, and it is the Yazdis, it is the Kurds, it is the Christians uh, populations that are being genocide over there. And, uh, and, and, and at the same time, all the nations that are fighting in there that are supporting this war, this, this could easily, be, easily have ended long ago uh, had these jihadists just stopped being funded. And, and at this point right now, I'm afraid Turkey is not going to back down. They're not going to back out. Uh, and that's that's just really a problem. Uh, and, and of course, Iran, Iran inside of Syria is is definitely not good. Where do, where are we going to go, especially now that President Trump is is talking about pulling out? And of course, he said this before that he would pull out. And of course, we have the uh, chemical attacks that keeps him in. And uh, and of course, there is a lot of debate over that. Uh, Aaron Erdem, who I, who was the Turkish uh, parliament member that brought before the Turkish government that 2013 was actually a chemical attack that was uh, alleged to be carried out by the al-Nusra ISIS militants carrying the sarin gas through his borders was probably the most convincing evidence that I ever saw that it wasn't actually Assad that gassed his own people in 2013. But where are we going to go? If we pull out now, uh, and I've always been kind of like split on that issue, but if the United States pulls out, the Kurds are sitting ducks. Sure. and. Again, I mean, how you interact with people defines who you are. Um, this can be solved without an escalation of military force. The first thing you do is you make a statement to the world that we recognize the right of individuals within Syria and North and Eastern Syria specifically to be self-administrating. Not that they're a separate country, that they're a self-administrating subcomponent of a broken and but greater Syria. We say we're sticking around. We establish a no-fly zone over Iraq and North and Eastern Syria to stop the violence perpetrated not just by Turkey, but also by the regime, right? We know that Assad bombed the Christians in the Kabul River Valley. There's no doubt about that. And then said he's the protector of Christians. So take that one for what it's worth. So you, you recognize their right to exist and have self-determination. You establish a no-fly zone. Then you give an ultimatum to Turkey. You can get out of Syria or you can get out of NATO. And, and the, these things, you, 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 you absolutely cancel pending withdrawal, the sale of F-35s and Patriot missiles. Um, you tell Iran that while we are there to fight ISIS, that if we find Iranian radical components on the ground, we'll engage targets of opportunity. Yes, I speak the language. Um, and, and just sit tight. We're not losing uh, a lot. And look, every single life matters. Every time I walk into Rayburn, where we have a memorial to the people who died in the wall on ter war and terrorism, I see names of people I knew. Uh, but you don't make a commitment and then roll up for political expediency. And if we want a different result in the region, we have to do something differently. It's about time we kept our word and stood beside people who share our values. Congressman uh, Garrett, one, one last question here. Do you think that President Trump, uh, the, the sales of the arms to Turkey is maybe a uh, concession that he made with them a, a, in exchange for withdrawing our troops? Uh, or do you really believe that uh, we have defeated ISIS? Uh, which seems to be more of a joint effort. Uh, you know, Russia's trying to defeat them. The Kurds are trying to defeat them. We're trying to defeat them. Uh, or, do, or what do you think is happening there? Especially to ISIS when it's convenient for them. I mean, I think if the SDF had it to do over again, and I don't know this, no one's told me this, uh, they may have left ISIS in Najin just so that the Americans didn't leave and subject, you know, everything between Membij and the Jazeera province uh, to attack by Turkey. Um, so there are people who say they're trying to defeat ISIS, but they're not, right? Here's a great example, and this is beyond the purview of your question, but let me go for a second. Outside Jarablus, where the Free Syrian Army is shooting at the, at the Syrian Democrat forces, with that Turkish base just a, a couple of miles away, what I was told by the people on the ground, who I, obviously everybody engages in propaganda, but I had no reason not to believe, was they looked through the field glasses the day after the Turks said we've driven ISIS out, and it's the same bad guys in different Turkish sanctioned uniforms, right? So some people are trying to defeat ISIS and some people are trying to exploit this chaos to advance their own agendas. I will never side with money over human life. I will never side uh, with allowing evil to continue to exist because, I, it, because it's convenient for me. Um, again, take care of the small things, the big things will take care of themselves. So 
yes, ISIS has been absolutely uh, skull drug to use a colloquialism on the battlefield. Uh, it's hard to defeat an idea. There are several thousand dead enders who are the best of the best because a lot of them went home or were, or were killed. Uh, they're not going anywhere. We've emboldened them. We've given them recruiting fodder, right? Look, the Americans are leaving. Um, and again, I mean, it just to me, to, I just never want to be that guy who gives his word and then balks. And that's who we are right now. It's not too late to change. I'm not anti-President Trump. I just want to get this right. Right. I can under I can understand that. And 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 just one thought there, just in, in closing here. Uh, it, what you're saying with the Turkish supporting ISIS, the evidence seems to be there. This is what Aaron Erdem said in his own address right before his own parliament, is that Erdogan, when he was uh, prime minister, before he was president, was complicit uh, within the government, was supporting the ISIS terrorists, bringing not only the sarin gas, but also the weapons in. And uh, there's a lot to be said about that and some recent discoveries we've also aired on Israeli News Live. But Congressman Garrett, thank you so much for being on and uh, uh, great luck in the future there. We really appreciate what you've done. And also, I'll add as well, Congressman Garrett went to uh, Iraq and Syria on his own. He paid for it himself. Uh, that's, that's a real congressman and we really yeah, appreciate your service. People who didn't want us to go and I'm proud of that too. It's my job try to help push for good policy and I think I'm doing that now and I hope we get right Thank you. Thank you guys for watching Israeli News Live. Erev Tov will be speaking to you later today.